All right guys, today I'm back over at Cassone's RV and I have a customer here that wants new slide out toppers put on. So he has a full wall slide out on this side, starting to fall apart, and a small slide out room in the bedroom. He wants a new topper on that one too. So this is a 2011 Sun Cruiser from Winnebago. And so if you've been following my videos, you might, you might have noticed this RV before. It had a roof leak right about there. It's still not leaking, so that's the good news. So now we'll just put some toppers on real fast. Now, this isn't really the awning channel, but I do feel like I've done a few uh, side out awnings recently. But this is gonna be Dometic uh, slide out toppers. And changing the fabrics on these are pretty straightforward and simple, and I'll try to make it make sense. First thing I have to do is run the slide out rooms out. So let me do that. Make sure the park brake is on. All right, and then Make sure the driver's seat's not gonna hit. Good. All right, switch on, extend the, that one out. Nice, and then the big one. Make sure we unlock it. And then we'll go out with it. Now, I definitely cannot say I'm a big fan of these uh, full wall slide outs from Power Gear, but it's been working. All right, now that we're out, let's go outside. All right, might be hard to see on this side. It doesn't look too bad, but if we look from underneath, you should be able to see all the holes in it. So it's about 10 years of uh, use on it, so I, I can, Definitely say it's worked pretty well. Let me just go ahead and uh, get this side ready and we'll try to figure it all out. Again, the medic awnings are pretty straightforward, or slide out toppers. You'll have to set screws on the rail up on top. Usually there's two, sometimes there's only one. Uh, they have two torsions, one on each side, so there are two springs, unlike Carefree. Uh, and then all we have to do is unwind this, take the tension off, and then uh, there'll be a hole through the the shaft right there will just go ahead and pin it. Now you don't officially have to uh, take the slide out all the way, run the slide out out. It just makes it a lot easier to do this because it unwraps most of the fabric at that point. And then the slide out roof's out and you're gonna walk along top of it like a catwalk when you're doing the job. Makes it easier. But it can be done rolled up. I just don't like doing it that way. All right, I think I have one. There we go my special long cotter pin. All right, I'm just gonna unroll it. You guys are gonna fall a little bit. Usually once it's uh, the channels on this side pointing back towards the roof, that's about where the hole's gonna be. Pin it right there. And that's it, now it's a uh, not gonna spin on us. You should be able to see the pin going through. Now you can use those uh, oil filter locking pliers if you want to, but this is just as easy and I'm not gonna mar up the surface on this one. And you wouldn't think so, but this material likes to stick that tube really well. And a lot of times there's gonna be some uh, masking tape holding it in place underneath. Let me show you that. Definitely wouldn't think so, but this little bit of masking tape right there will keep this uh, fabric from sliding off the tube very easily. And there's usually two pieces of it. A lot of times, if you can't peel it off, if you can't peel it off, a lot of times I'll just uh, cut it. That'll do it. All right, now I just take out the two set screws right there. Put those safely on the roof where they can't get lost. All right, now all I have to do is pull it out. So we're basically going to do the exact same thing over here, but there is one thing I do want to show you, which should uh, explain some things to you guys. The fabric's not doing so well either, and it's torn pretty bad in the front here too. The notorious on really long slide outs with these slide out toppers is the uh, fabric will stretch and pool and, you, uh, and creating uh, puddles up there. And a lot of people ask me to just add tension to the torsions to make the, the fabric tighter, but adding tension won't ever help. 
because that won't actually fix the problem. The problem isn't, uh, it's not tight enough at the ends. The problem is that it, it droops in the middle because of the length of the tube. Let me see if I can show you. But the number one problem with slide-out toppers that are this long, this is 24, 24 feet, as the tube itself will actually bow in the middle. They put these cradle supports on these really, really long ones to keep that from happening. It does start to mar up the fabric, but if I were to just pretend that this is a 12-foot awning from the center cradle to the torsion on that side, you can watch my hand, how much I can just bend that thing easily. And just like that. So what happens is when the water pools on there, it actually just bends the tube a little bit and which uh, loosens up the fabric, which allows more water to pool right there. So adding tension to the torsion right there is just gonna pull the tight, the side tighter, but won't have any effect on this. So what a lot of people end up doing is uh, putting a beach ball or something underneath right there. Keep the fabric from uh, puddling like that. I'm not a big fan of that because you're just gonna deform it the opposite way and then you'll forget that you have a beach ball in there one time and it's another hassle to set up. If there is uh, gonna be raining, what the manufacturer is gonna ask you to do is run the slide-out room in periodically to drain the water off the top of the slide-out rather than just letting it pool up there. Which is another reason why you shouldn't store your motorhome for a long period of time with the slide-out rooms out. That was pretty much the main thing I wanted to point out with this. Let's go ahead and throw these toppers back on. Now you can special order this uh, material straight from the manufacturer for the right length. Uh, there'll be a data sheet on, on the tube itself lets you know what the, uh, the number is when you order it which would be much more common if you're getting a uh, canvas acrylic type of uh, fabric. Looks more like cloth rather than these vinyl ones. This is a vinyl fabric. Uh, nine times out of 10, most shops are just gonna use a, a roll of fabric and cut to length because there's nothing special about this stuff between Lippert, Carefree, or Dometic. They're all the same lengths or the same types of fabrics. It's almost like they did that intentionally. So unfortunately, my local supplier didn't have uh, the material I need. So I'm gonna to, uh, head up the street real fast to go get the material. I'll be right back with you. I'm gonna to have to go uh, all the way to Phoenix. I have to go pick up a roll of slide-out material so I can do these slide-out toppers. I was gonna pick it up at Camping World, but they're out of stock. So it's a quick little 40 minute drive. So they do offer free delivery service, but I need the parts this morning and not in the afternoon when they would show up. All right, we're just pulling into here right now. Look at that, AIM Wholesale. This place is really nice. They moved in here about, geez, about four or five years ago now. There's a new location. They've also uh, spread to Utah, I think. They do have an online portal for me, but in my situation, I just use their book that they give me. Yeah, let me go grab it. Just one little box, it should be up front here. Shouldn't have to go to will call. Oh, that's heavy. All right, get back to the shop. All right, that was pretty fast. Wish I could travel that fast all the time. We're gonna be using Solera. Now this is a leopard uh, product, but it's identical to the Dometic. Even their slide out toppers are, I think they just stole Dometic's patents. Now, of course, the downside is this is a 50-foot roll, and I only need 35 feet, but I'll just have extra for one more slide-out topper down the road. So there's the part number for it. This one's black. I will put a link in the description if you guys want to get some. It's definitely going to be a lot cheaper to buy 50-foot than to go to a dealership and pay what they're going to charge you for one 20-foot section of it. There's really nothing special about this. I normally just uh, use the old one as a drop cloth for the new fabric so we don't have to lay it down on really bad dirt. That's pretty much my plan there. I'll get a measurement on this and we'll pull it out. I'm not freaking out too much right now, guys, but I only have about an hour and a half left now. Uh, they pulled me the wrong part. It's white, it's not black. It's kind of my fault, I should have looked. But now I have to drive all the way back there and exchange it. All right, well, I had to change positions. We'll just lay this out. I got the long one out. We'll cut this one to fit and cut the next one. So I don't know if you guys can see, it's the exact same dimensions as the uh, Dometic one. So you can see right there. It's right underneath. Right underneath over there. So, all right, so I'll use my squares. I'll just uh, 
put a board behind right there, cut this thing to length, It'd be pretty straightforward. Pretty much the key to it is just make sure you have a uh, brand new sharp razor blade when you go to cut it. All right, well that's one down. I'll cut the other one to fit and we'll get up back on top there. So really there's only two keys hold putting this back on again. There's gonna be a big insert that's gonna go on the awning rail side or on the motorhome side. And there'll be a thinner insert. So if I can play the two of them, should be able to see one's thinner than the other one. So the thinner one goes in the awning tube. And the last thing to know is that there's a seam, a natural seam. Now it's not, these aren't stitched anymore. They're just ultrasonically welded. So you want that seam to be on the bottom side. So you want the non, you don't want to be able to see, see the seam when it's installed. So it would go in that position right there. Now, strangely enough, the last question I always get, even though I tell you guys what it is, I just use glass cleaner to uh, act as a lubricant. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, spray the awning rail right there. So it goes, goes in a little bit smoother same thing with right here I like to use glass cleaner because it doesn't leave any sort of residue like a silicone spray might so I don't have to clean off the sidewalls this is a pretty short awning so I can do this by one one by myself now the longer one I will need help Right now, all I have to do is just center it on the tube, and then pull the and then pull the pin. So I find the easiest thing to do is just to uh, bring the excess, lay it over the tube just like this, so there's no excess folds on top of the slide out. Wait for the wind to die down, of course. And I can already see I'm off center there. All right, so I'm right about to where it was. Pull out any slack, so it looks like using that as a guide, we're good. If you don't have that as a guide, that's what tape measure is for. Now we just have to pull that pin. So I'm just going to uh, take the tension off by grabbing the tube, pull this pin, now it's out. This is kind of the dangerous part, you just go ahead and let go. Nice. Now I just have to run the slide out room in and out a few times to make sure it's centered. Then we'll put the screws in. All right, well, we still look golden up here. So let me go ahead and put the screws in. There's one, two. Now their main purpose is to keep the uh, awning from sliding around on the rail or the fabric from sliding on the rail. That's its only purpose. If you've ever tried to pull out a fabric, this has a screw in it. You'll know what, how difficult it is to move. Now, I didn't really cover it. But it's always a good idea, if you are doing a slide-out topper, you might as well go ahead and take a look at the top of your slide-out. Make sure there's no damage or sealant gaps. It's a good time to do that. So yeah, Winnebago's these full wall slide-outs, they have uh, these slide locks that come up. And they uh, just pop up like little, little hands, grabby hands, that go against the uh, inside of the wall. Their main purpose is to uh, keep the top of the slide-out from opening, driving down the road. It's not really a safety or a travel lock, it's really just to make sure that it doesn't leak. So there's one there and another one right there. And of course, these are quite frustrating because if they do break, you can't move your slide out. Now, obviously the long side's exactly the same. It just, you'll need two people for sure. And you have to work around this cradle. All right, so we got it laid out, ready to go. Now again, this one, you just have to run in and out to make sure it's uh, centered on there. And All right, so that's installed. Now I have the, and now the anti-bell is on. So now, if this were to catch wind driving down the road, the anti-bell would engage right there and keep it from unrolling any more than that. There's actually another one on up there too. Now those weren't installed right, and I just reinstalled them correctly. But that's not the point. But my main point is that uh, I installed it wrong the first time. I put the fabric in the wrong rail, and I had to come back 
take it out and put it back in the right thing. But let me go ahead and critique Winnebago. All right, so with the slide out room out, it's almost completely horizontal. Almost, I mean, it's got maybe a half inch pitch to it. <laughs> but if it was actually coming up to this awning rail right there, we'd have a pretty good pitch. But Winnebago designed that for a reason, to have its own rail. Uh, they would have put that kind of time effort into it if it didn't need it. In fact, they even painted this, this rail a couple different colors to match the body line. So it's hard to hide if I install it wrong. <laughs> Somebody ever found the, uh, the right rail underneath there. So I, I just had to put it back the way the factory had it. There it is, installing a full room slide out topper. Identical to any other Dometic slide out room topper, just a lot longer and it has that cradle support in the middle. And if you guys remember, adding tension to the springs will not keep this roof from uh, or this material from sagging and puddling. It'll just tighten up the edges right there, but it'll stretch out in the middle even more. So there's the new toppers on the slide out. It's a full wall slide out over there, that's about 24 feet. And the new slide out topper over here. I want to say that was about seven feet. I don't remember anymore. Very simple. You don't have to take anything apart. Just have to pin the tubes. And then, like I said, this cradle support right here will cause some wear damage on this vinyl because this is just vinyl fabric. It does stretch out. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll try to do another one. Now, here's a little special thing for anybody that actually remembers this coach where I repaired the water leak up front. Let's go take a look at it. Now again, Winnebago uses New Flex 311 or Hangs self-leveling silicone now. It's really quite a high quality uh, sealant. You should never have to retouch it up. And I used the same stuff when I did the front cap. And this was about two years ago. And everything's looking fine. And more importantly, I haven't got a call back saying that it's leaking anymore. So I think we fixed the problem. But that's about two years of uh, use on it. And... Everything's holding up really well right there even this uh, rail right there looks pretty good But there is one thing I will show you so I kind of beat the dead horse with this one This is uh new flex 311 self-leveling silicone hang self-leveling silicone um, Nothing else is gonna stick to it other than silicone. Let's take a look at the rear cap on the rear cap right here I don't know if you can see it's all yellow and gross That is not self-leveling silicone. This is uh what's known as flow seal. I don't like flow seal because it turns yellow and brittle and doesn't stick. So I never recommend flow seal. It's not a very commonly found one, but for some reason some dealers still have it, but not right here where there would have been silicone before. So somebody at some point did scrape off the old sealant and seal over the top of it. Uh, ultimately this doesn't do much because this is exposed to the outside right there. There wouldn't be any water leaking to the inside because there's nothing behind this cap other than an opening. You'll be able to see over here. This is uh, feels more like a die core, an acrylic type of sealant that they used right there, which obviously didn't hold. But water leaking back there is not going to be a big issue. The customer's not complaining about that. I'll let them know about it and keep an eye on it. But this is why you want to just make sure you use the right sealants on your roof. Yeah, it's not sticking at all, is it? I need to stop pulling on this. That was it, guys. That was a little extra bonus at the end. Use the right sealant on your roof. Bye.